What's up, Internet and SourceFed Nerd Movie Club peoples? Don Brosman here for another movie review, and this week we reviewed Lars and the Real Girl. Lars and the Real Girl stars Ryan Gosling as a 27-year-old recluse person who has kind of like a antisocial problem. He lives in the garage of the house that him and his brother own, and he is just this creepy 70s mustache serial killer, Mr. Rogers sweatshirt wearing looking dude. So for all you girls out there who are dreamy over Ryan Gosling, I dare you to say he was hot in this movie because, eh, eh not hot at all. His brother Gus is played by Paul Schneider. Gus's wife Karen is played by Emily Mortimer. The movie surrounds Ryan Gosling's character who goes on the internet and orders a sex doll and then presents that sex doll to his family, the town he lives in, and essentially the world as his new girlfriend. The sex doll's name is Bianca, and he makes up this very long, vivid, background about her. Her parents dead. She's from Cambodia or something. And he tries to act like she's a real person. He even compensates for her while they're at dinner by eating her food to make it look like she's been eating. One of the things that I liked about this movie is the dynamic that takes place between Lars and his sister-in-law, Karen. She tries so hard to include him in the life of her and her husband, Gus, Lars's brother, to the point where she has to tackle him in the driveway just to get him to accept a dinner invitation. One of the funnier parts of the, this movie is how Lars tries to brace his brother and her, his wife for Bianca. He's talking about her like she's a missionary, she just got here, she's in a wheelchair, blah blah blah. And then the movie instantly transitions to her in the house sitting on the couch. And, and Gus and Karen's look is just priceless. Just, completely shock, awe, disbelief. That part was hilarious. Part of what makes the movie funny too is the fact that Lars is trying to sell Bianca off as this great, wonderful person and yet she shows up in these hooker boots, stripper outfit with all this makeup on that eventually gets washed off and, and whatnot. The town is really, really supportive of Lars. They go so far as to talk to Bianca as though she's a person. They give her jobs, things to do. Granted, it's a mannequin. she's a mannequin in a window, so she basically is doing what she does anyways, is stand around. I also liked how they incorporated a doctor who was designed to treat Bianca, but as a way to actually treat Lars for his problem. One of the things that I thought was a little over the top and ridiculous was the fact that when Bianca doesn't wake up, they call 911. And the EMTs, the police department, the the hospital go so far to continue this delusion and this charade of Bianca being real that they actually admit her in the hospital. And the whole time I'm thinking this is a huge waste of resources. Not just a waste of time for Gus and Karen, but for the EMTs. That's a $900 ambulance ride. The bed that they get. I mean, there's always, have you ever been to the hospital? You wait in line like 10 hours just to get seen by the the triage nurse, then you get seen by the doctor 10 hours later, and then maybe in a week you get your, your bed. So the fact that the hospital expedited her getting her own bed was just a little ridiculous. I know that sounds weird that I'm saying something's unbelievable when we're watching a movie about a guy who is in love with a sex doll who he pretend, pretends is real, who, takes, who he takes to church, but I'm just saying. One of the things that bothered me about Ryan Gosling's character, he had this like weird eye squint thing that he kept doing the whole movie. I wasn't sure if that was like, his way of having some sort of nervous twitch if he was fighting off tears because he cried a lot but it was just this weird thing i wasn't really sure what he was trying to do it was just some sort of strange i don't know tick thing and it just it just didn't really add to the character it's just like what the hell is that for i like the developing romance between lars and kelly garner's character margo uh, she's kind of dorky she's persistent and aggressive and even though she finds out that Lars is dating a sex doll, she doesn't really let up. She kind of does what she needs to do to kind of get Lars' attention and bring him, you know, over to her and, you know, attract him to her. The movie had this strange, impending doom, ominous feel to it the whole time. You kept waiting for something bad to happen. Uh, like they would get in an accident and Bianca's head would come flying off. Someone would come and take the doll away because it's unsafe. You just constantly felt like something bad was going to happen. Overall, I, I, um, I, I enjoyed the movie. It was definitely different. Um, it's something you'd probably see on like IFC or at like some art house. It's not a mainstream type movie. I don't think a lot of people are going to like it. The ending I didn't really care for, 
but the movie itself is just weird, it's quirky, but overall, I would just say it was okay. Not the greatest movie, better than some of the things that we've been reviewing on, on Movie Club, um, but definitely not the best thing ever. Hope you liked my review on Lars and the Real Girl, and I look forward to seeing what we have in, uh, in store next week. Later.